everyone, welcome to my fourth vlog. Um, this time I'm going to talk about something that I said I'd talk about in my first video, and that is how I was first diagnosed with epilepsy. I actually wasn't born with epilepsy, I only developed it when I was 19 years old. Um, so yeah, my whole childhood I was completely unaffected by it. So the reason I've got epilepsy is because I had a traumatic birth. Um, I was starved of oxygen when I was a baby, so it came out completely grey, no oxygen. Um, was whisked away from my parents and put into an incubator and they were given a Polaroid of me, so apparently when that happens it's not looking good. Um, I had some febrile convulsions. I was strapped back in the incubator because apparently I kept picking all the wires and trying to pull them out of me and things because they were just everywhere. I've still got actually a little mark on my hand. Here it is. A little mark on my hand. I know you can't see that, but where a tube was going into me. Once I was out of the danger zone, my parents were able to take me home, <clears throat> but the doctors did say to them that they should just keep an eye on me and make sure I don't get too hot um, and that at around age seven I might develop something like epilepsy but obviously seven came and went and I was fine and it was only until I was 19 that I well that epilepsy came into my life so we were on a family ski holiday in France I it was the last day and I started feeling really really sick and so I said, guys, I think I'm just going to go back to the chalet where we were staying. I was sharing a room with my brother and sister. Um, so that night we all went to sleep. And they were woken up by me acting quite strangely in a way they'd never seen before. And so this was actually my first seizure, but obviously no one knew this at the time. Apparently I'd got out of bed and... I, I don't really know all the details, but I think I was whacking my face on... Yeah, we were sort of in a room with like wooden beams, and I was hitting my face against this. Um, because the next day, I'd cut all of my face, bit my lips, and I was just a bit of a mess, visually. And then had to get the plane home, and I was just like, oh my god, what the hell's happened? Anyway, so... My brother and sister woke up to me just doing this and apparently also trying to take my clothes off, which is strange. Apparently that's something some people do, but yeah, I was taking my clothes off and she went downstairs, told my parents she thought that I was having a seizure, like an epileptic fit, she said. Um, and they were like, what are you talking about? Of course she's not, because obviously I'd never had it before. Um, then I think there was another family in the chalet that tried to come and help and at this point I was taking my clothes off so that wasn't ideal. Anyway, um, so at some point it must have just finished, they'd called a doctor and I remember, because as I said before, and some people know, that even though it seems like you've come round after a seizure it does actually take a while after that for you to be fully conscious. So I was laying down on my bed, looked up when I woke up and saw a French doctor looking down at me and I remember he just said are you okay? and I just said yeah I'm fine and everyone laughed because they were like no you're not fine I was like what the hell I obviously was like what the hell's going on but yeah I, I don't know what the hell I was thinking the doctor said that I'd had gastroenteritis so I was really dehydrated that's why I was vomiting and had had this um, hypo hypoglycemic attack is what they said I'd had and yeah, so he told me to have um, grenadine all night, so my dad stayed up, quite sweet, stayed up all night and kept giving me sips of grenadine to keep my sugar up, keep me hydrated. Um, so yeah, and as I said, then didn't, didn't really get much sleep. Next day I had all my cuts and bruises all over me and I think there were other things, but yeah, I was just completely dazed and was like, what has just happened? Really, really weird. Then I came back to England. I was in my first year of uni at this point, and it was so this was April, and all my exams and stuff were starting like quite shortly after that. And during that time, I had two more seizures. I went to see a neurologist, went through all of that process, and because I'd had another seizure and not just one, they said, You've got epilepsy. 
I went for an MRI scan, which is when they put you in those, that big machine and yeah, scan you and find out what's going on in your brain and you get loads of different copies of that, which is quite interesting, but then I could see that the reason I had it was because I had this little lesion in my brain, scar tissue. And it's ridiculous because it's literally tiny, but yeah, that's what causes my epilepsy. I had an EEG test, which is where they stick lots of wires onto your head and measure your brain waves, the frequency and see if you've got any epileptic activity going on. Anyway, after all these tests, I went to see the neurologist and he put me on medication. He put me on Lamictal, a form of Lamotrigine, and I think I was taking something like 100 milligrams twice a day, morning and night. So, yeah, my world was completely turned upside down. Um, gone from just a normal 19 year old student to a student with epilepsy. Um, quite a few changes, for example, I'd been learning to drive, I'd just taken my test and failed it just before I'd gone skiing and was about to take it again on my return and then obviously was told that I wasn't allowed to drive. Right in the middle of exam season at uni, so yeah, that was a complete mess, kind of. I mean, to be honest, I actually did all right, but looking back, that was pretty crazy that I did. I was doing all of my exams and stuff. I think maybe there were a couple that I'd missed, but I still came out with a 2-1, so, I mean, <laughs> maybe that says something about my course. So yeah, so that's how I was diagnosed. It was quite scary, but actually it was handled quite nicely with the neurologist and everything and I felt like I was given quite a lot of advice and my friends were all really supportive and in some ways made me feel closer to some people because they'd been through it with me. So that's taking all the positives from the experience. So just to sum up, I would say diagnosis wise, it's very scary, I know it's scary, but people are really supportive and there's a lot of help out there and information and just ask lots of questions, try and find out lots of different things, maybe look up your medicine, make sure that you feel comfortable taking it. You don't have to just, you know, just don't just sit there and let them tell you what you have to do. You can question the doctor or neurologist. And yeah, they do know what they're talking about, obviously, but sometimes, you know, everyone's different and they should look at you, look at people case by case and you have a right to say what you think, obviously, because it does affect everyone differently and you want to make sure that your medicine isn't giving you any side effects, etc. So, yeah, just look after yourself. Remember, you're number one. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any comments or if you want to share your own stories, then put them in the box below. And please subscribe to my channel. I know it takes a little bit extra, a bit more time to sign in rather than just watching the video. But it'd be great if you subscribe and then you can find out when I've got my next video out and hopefully they can help you. Thanks guys!